welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Brittany Lester. If you're new here, I am a mom. I'm a fitness professional. I create content surrounding motherhood, lifestyle, fashion, beauty, kind of. <laughs> um, and then of course, health and fitness and wellness. And that's how I started off in this space. Um, but I wanted to create this video because I made a video like this back in 2018. I'm not gonna touch my hair without this video, I promise. Back in 2018, I made a video, how to have a fit and healthy pregnancy, and I wanted to update it just because it's been three years. I'm on my second pregnancy. I am currently, look at this belly. <laughs> I am 35 weeks and three days pregnant as of today, and I just wanted to give you guys an updated video just talking about all the different ways to have a fit and healthy pregnancy. A little bit about my expertise or my background. I have a Bachelor of Science in Health Education. I'm a pre and postnatal certified personal trainer, regular personal trainer. I have a lot of certifications. I'm a fitness nutrition specialist. I'm in the middle of my second pre and postnatal certification. I actually got gifted one, so I was like, you know what, why not? I can never stop learning. I'm also doing a diocese recti and core certification. And yeah, just, <laughs> that's me. Those are my specialties and I want to come on here to talk about fitness and pregnancy because there's such a stigma and there's so many myths surrounding it, so much nonsense surrounding it that I want to put this out on YouTube. Even if three people watch it, totally fine. <laughs> um, but I think it's just, it's one of the most important topics for women to know. And I wanna dive into some of the most important topics on how to have a fit and healthy pregnancy. First thing is first, diaphragmatic breathing and proper core engagement. This is and should be the foundation of a fit and healthy pregnancy. I don't care what you do, <laughs> just kidding, of course I care what you do. But if there's one thing that you learn when you get pregnant, it's proper breathing during daily functional movements, during exercise, and proper core engagement. I actually have a program for women called One Hera. Um, I might be changing the name soon, so if you watch this and the name has already changed, that's why. But I have a fitness program for women, and it also has, sorry, I'm so out of breath. <laughs> it also has a prenatal section in there, and as well as a core and pelvic floor section in there, talking all about, you know, the ins and outs of prenatal training as well as a training program to follow. But diaphragmatic breathing. So this is just your natural breath. It is your breathing that you're not breathing through your chest. It's a 360 expansion of the ribs, the belly, and the back. It's how you should be breathing all the time. Like I said, through daily life, through daily functional movements, through exercise, so on and so forth. And then proper core engagement. So learning how to activate that deep core. You know, your core is your body's central unit. And especially when you're pregnant, there's a lot of pressure that goes on in your core because you are housing a human. <laughs> Believe it or not, you're housing a human. I know I'm on my second pregnancy, I'm almost there. And it still blows my mind that there's a human inside of my body. <laughs> but um, there's so many different things to know. You know, di proper posture is important. And learning proper core engagement and proper breathing, both during exercise and both during um, daily functional movements and just daily life. And knowing how and when to engage that core is essential because that's gonna help not only protect your core during your pregnancy, but also help you postpartum. Um, you know, diatesis recti is the separation of the abdominal muscles. It's nothing to be afraid of because it's gonna happen to mostly every single woman that gets pregnant. But there are things, like I said, proper core engagement, proper breathing through exercise and the right exercises, the right core exercises and controlling and managing that intra-abdominal pressure while you're exercising um, and knowing how and when to activate it and how deep to activate it during different things. So, you know, I go through this all in my program um, more in depth, but I did want to mention it in here just because it is so important. And maybe I'll insert a little clip of proper core engagement video that I, um, or engaging the deep core video that I recorded for my Instagram page. Um, basically, you will bring together those pelvic floor muscles, lift it up, lift that lower belly, activate the TVA, and your belly button will be coming in and up. So it's so much different than sucking your belly button to your spine, which you don't wanna do. Um, 
this is something you can do on it, your own during pregnancy, just as a core, core exercise, the belly pump. There's so many different names for it. TVA, breath, TVA activation, deep core activation, whatever you want to call it. I, I really don't care, but engaging that deep core and learning is going to be essential for your pregnancy and your postpartum. And honestly, even when you're not pregnant, you should be doing that for ex during exercise, before exercise. Um, so, and you'll also see if you follow me on Instagram at Brittany Lesser, um, I po have, have been posting so many prenatal workouts and you'll see me activate my core before every single exercise. So I just wanted to talk about some of the myths that you hear about pregnancy and I wanted to tell you the truths about them. So first thing is first, don't lift over 25 pounds. Clearly, if you are a mom of two kids or more, your toddler probably weighs more than 25 pounds. I'm pretty sure Grayson is, you know, between 30 and 35 pounds now at three years old and I lift him up all the time. There's, there's no way that during my whole pregnancy, I'm not gonna lift up my toddler. So obviously with any exercise, you need to be cleared by your doctor. Some women do have high risk pregnancies and should not be exercising. Whatever your doctor says, listen to it, of course. But if you have a totally healthy pregnancy, you can totally lift weights. Obviously there's gonna be modifications that you're gonna do as your belly grows larger and of course safe core exercises and like I said that core activation. Another myth that I always see is don't work your core. Pregnancy is a great time to work your core. It's just gonna be a matter of how you work your core. Obviously before every single exercise you should be engaging that core and then properly breathing throughout the exercise. So what you do is you, like I said, lift your pelvic floor, engage that deep core, then you start performing the movement, you inhale, like for example, if you're gonna do a squat, you'll inhale on the way down, exhale, and engage that core again on the way up. That's an example of a proper breathing throughout an exercise. Um, now the deepness of the activation is gonna depend on what you're doing. And you know, for example, if you are lifting your toddler, you should be engaging your core before you lift your toddler because that's like if you were lifting a 35 pound weight, you know? So it's very similar. Um, and then again, in deep, my dog, I wish you guys could see it. You too beautiful. Um, during those daily functional movements, again, learning about your core and your, uh, and learning your pelvic floor too. Highly recommend to see a pelvic floor physio if you are pregnant and manually postpartum. Great source of information and also individualized help both during pregnancy and postpartum. I think everyone should. I haven't actually seen one during pregnancy because my doctor said that I would need to pay out of pocket and I haven't done that yet, which I totally should have invested in that, but you know, we're here. I haven't had the time. I probably 100% will postpartum um, to see a pelvic floor specialist, but highly recommend every single woman see a pelvic floor specialist. That's not my specialty, um, but it's extremely helpful. So anyway, that's another myth is not to work your core. It's a matter of how you work your core and engage and controlling your intra-abdominal pressure. So obviously there's pressure in your core all the time. That's what stabilizes us. That's what keeps us upright. That's what, whatever. But controlling that pressure, for example, you know, that's why you don't really do things like sit-ups and planks and so on and so forth. Those kinds of core exercises are not really beneficial, especially in the later stages of pregnancy because you're already having so much pressure putting downwards on that linea alba, which is the connective tissue in your core, so much pressure is already on that just by being pregnant. So if you're doing exercises like that, that puts more unnecessary pressure on that linea alba, um, it just further weakens it. You know, in knowing how to engage that core and properly managing the intra-abdominal pressure during different movements um, is key. So, you know, some, any like safe or unsafe exercises is gonna be very individualized because some women may have better core control and better management of that pressure when they're doing certain exercises versus someone who might not. So if you see any coning or doming, um, if you feel pain or pressure or, yeah, pain, pressure, coning, doming, um, if you're peeing, you have any incontinence, those are all signs that you should be stopping an exercise and scaling back or modifying it. Um, another myth is exercise can hurt the baby and take away nutrients. That's absolutely not true. Actually, the ACOG recommends exercise for every single woman and studies show that the fetus 
gets not only benefits in the womb, but later on when the baby um, grows up, they have lower risk for obesity, lower risk for diabetes, so many different health benefits for a mom that exercises with the baby. Okay, the next one is that you can't start exercise if you didn't exercise before pregnancy. Again, this isn't true because the ACOG actually recommends everyone can start exercise and can benefit from exercise during pregnancy. You just recommend starting slow and working your way up to 30 minutes of moderate intensity exercise per day. Okay, so the next thing is exercise. Obviously, you want to be exercising during your pregnancy. Again, if you have been cleared by your doctor, so beneficial for both mom and baby, not only to just stay healthy, but for your mental sanity. I know for myself, I always get this question, how do you stay motivated and how do you stay you know, working out throughout your pregnancy? And the answer is it actually gives me more energy. Um, obviously, in the first trimester, I just kind of did it when I didn't feel like I wanted to die, you know? <laughs> you either feel like when you throw up or you wanna die. And so I probably worked out like one to three times a week. Totally always be mindful, listen to your own body. And then second trimester, third trimester, I'm still listening to my body, I'm still being mindful, doing what feel good, feels good to myself. One of the best things that I suggest is walking, just getting daily steps in, going for walks. That's probably one of the best things that you can do. But of course, following a program that is safe for pregnancy and modifying when and if necessary. So like I said, my program, One Hera, um, does have a pregnancy program with modifications. But again, each modification is going to be, or each individual is going to have different modifications. So of course, the general modifications, you're not going to be laying on your belly. Um, you're not going to be laying on your back for extended periods of time. You're going to have to, you know, you're not going to do like regular push-ups. You'll probably modify, I do incline and on my knees on a bench or on a wall, something like that. So, you know, all different types of modifications, maybe in the third trimester, instead of regular back squats, you're doing bench squats just because it feels a lot better for yourself. Maybe switching from conventional to sumo deadlifts, stuff like that to accommodate your growing belly and keep yourself safe and keep that core and pelvic floor healthy. But again, any exercise is gonna be different for every single person. Do what feels good for you. Movement is movement, especially during pregnancy. Your number one thing is to just stay healthy and physically and mentally throughout your pregnancy. You're not training for strength or um, like you wanna keep muscle. You definitely probably wanna to try to keep as much muscle. You are gonna, you know, your body naturally gains fat and stores fat, especially in the first trimester. You're gonna lose some muscle, you're gonna lose some strength. That's the name of the game. You're going to gain weight. You're going to gain fat. But keeping some muscle and just moving your body to stay healthy is the most important thing. Of course, nutrition, eating a healthy diet, um, mostly whole foods, but also enjoying yourself. I get questions about this all the time. Now, I'm not a registered dietitian. There are some really great prenatal dietitians on Instagram. I think pre the prenatal nutritionist is her name on Instagram. She's great. She gives so much nutrition information. Obviously there's certain foods that are safer to eat or unsafe to, you know, maybe higher chance of foodborne illness, things like that. And you definitely just want to eat a healthy diet. You want to eat lots of fruits and vegetables, um, just like how your normal diet should be. Um, one thing I will say is nutrients are more important than calories. So obviously you will be gaining a healthy amount of weight throughout your pregnancy and your caloric intake will increase as, you know, like the third trimester, for example, you'll be eating more, but actually research shows that nutrients are more important than calories. So you always think, oh, I gotta eat more calories, I gotta eat more calories, which is totally true. It's true, you do need to eat more, a little bit more calories during the second and third trimester to gain that healthy amount of weight, but focus on those nutrients. Some, some top nutrients that you wanna focus on is choline. Um, a lot of prenatals actually do not have enough choline in their prenatals. Obviously folate or folic acid should already be in your prenatal, but a prenatal is not going to cover all of your um, nutrition needs. It's just not. And then another thing that a lot of moms don't get enough of is vitamin D. So vitamin D, choline, folate, all important. Obviously some fish oil, omega threes. I, I tried, <laughs> I tried to do the salmon row and it's absolutely vile. I will not do it again, but you know, Grayson turned out fine. I didn't do that with him, but yeah, those are some things that you should definitely be focusing on. And then of course, like I said, fruits and vegetables, eating a healthy balanced diet with all macronutrients, but also living your life, you know, give into cravings. If you're craving something, give into it. Um, enjoy yourself. I mean, I 
honestly feel like I eat the same way pre-pregnancy and post-pregnancy. I probably just eat a little bit more um, or pre-pregnancy and pregnancy and post whatever. My diet doesn't change that much except for the portion sizes. Um, but when you're pregnant, you know, like I said, listen to your body, uh, eat foods that you are craving and move on. That's it. The last thing I wanted to talk about is focus on healthy weight gain. But I want to make it known that that will be different for every single person. I always see, or I always get questions. I always see people so worried about how much weight they're gaining or how much weight is right for them or yada, 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 or whatever. Here's the thing. During pregnancy, your body is going to gain different amounts of weight at different periods of time and at different rates. So for example, my first pregnancy, I gained rapidly in the first trimester and then it very, very much stalled out. And I only gained, you know, the, the recommended amount for my body type, which was like 25 pounds or whatever. But I gained like 10 pounds in the first trimester, something crazy like that. My second pregnancy, um, I wasn't, I didn't gain right away. And then I gained like a large sump of weight in a short period of time and then it stalled out again. So that seems like what my body's just doing now. Now I'm gradually gaining at a healthy rate, not too fast, not too slow, not too much. I'm like in the perfect range right now. Um, but there was a time where I was like, whoa, I'm gaining pretty fast and I didn't feel like I was eating that much more. I think your body is gonna do what it needs to do when it needs to do it during your pregnancy. I know there's some women who eat so healthy and they exercise every single day during their pregnancy and they still gain 50 plus pounds and that's what's healthy for them. I Every single person's body is different. Everyone's going to gain a different amount of weight at different rates. Like I said, of course, always go by your doctor, talk to your doctor, but I personally um, keep track of my weight at home and then when I get to the doctor, I don't even, I don't like looking at the scale of the doctor for some reason, but then they'll tell me, oh, your weight gain's fine and I'm like, okay, cool. And that's it, you know? Maybe you don't even want to look at it. Maybe you don't even, maybe that'll just mess with your brain. But I don't ever want you to think that you should be so hyper-focused on how much weight you're gaining. Um, definitely not dieting during pregnancy ever. Um, and that's it. I, I just don't think weight gain and worrying about it should be the forefront of your pregnancy because Again, your mental health is always the most important thing, and I know that it's okay to struggle with body image during pregnancy or struggle with, you know, knowing what's right and what's wrong and whatever, this and this and that, and having anxiety over things that you don't know or you can't control, but do what you can. Do what you can control. If you know you're eating mostly whole foods and you're eating a healthy diet, you're exercising, you're moving your body, then you know that your body's gonna do what it needs to do. So those are my top tips to having a healthy and fit pregnancy. And again, there's no one size fits all. There is no, oh, a healthy pregnancy or a fit pregnancy means this, this, and this, and you lift weights this amount of many times a week and you eat this many calories. That's not it. Healthy is gonna be different for every single pregnant mom. And I just use those terms, healthy and fit pregnancy, because I don't know, it just makes sense. <laughs> but like I said, everyone's so different. Focus on proper breathing to recap. Proper breathing and core engagement. Definitely see a pelvic floor physio. That would be awesome for everyone to do that. I actually think that that should be offered through every single insurance policy, <laughs> um, including my own. Um, exercise and move your body in a way that feels good to you. Listen to your body, be mindful, learn your body. Um, nutrition, eat healthy food, focus on nutrients in, over calories. Obviously calories are still important and gain a healthy amount of weight, but don't stress about it. And then the last thing is just take care of yourself, okay? Give yourself grace, um, focus on that self-love, focus on, you know, if this is your first baby, oh my God, rest and soak it up. <laughs> do things that you couldn't do, or that you, you know, that'll be a little bit harder once baby comes. If it's your second baby, again, schedule in that time, that alone time, that mental health time for yourself and that's it so hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you for watching if there's anything that i probably didn't cover that you want to tell people in the comments then do so below and i'll see you guys in the next video bye